Good morning. As you make your way to your seats, we've got a few things going on at Top of the Hill. Just a few. You know, it's that time of year. First, what I don't have a slide for, thanks, Anna. Good save. Um, is we will be doing our new Shepherd Couple ordination on May 12th. Um, so that's also Mother's Day. So we're going to celebrate our moms and grandmoms and also welcome our new Shepherd Couples in to our leadership. So please be here that day. It's going to be a great day full of celebration. Okay, now for ones I do have slides for. Um, immediately following worship today, we will have our LTC Awards lunch um, in the gathering room right here. Lunch, it will be provided for all LTC participants and their parents, um, but I'm sure anyone who wants to see the awards is welcome and invited to come support that. It's going to be a fun time. Okay, our third through seventh graders will be going to Mount Lee Christian Camp again this summer. I believe tomorrow, yes, the 15th, is the last day of the early bird pricing. So that's a pretty good discounted rate if you have third through seventh graders um, who want to attend the second session with Doug Martin. That's what we signed up for. Um, if you want to get a discount, try to sign up by tomorrow. And then the price will increase after that. It's about $50 off. Yeah. Um, so you can scan the QR code here or it will also be in our midweek email. Okay, our next center of hope serving day. Do you want to say anything about this? Okay. Will, will be Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. I don't know how time is flying. April 17th is this Wednesday. Um, if you are able to help in any way, serving, providing food, or donating money towards that, you can talk to Sue Ann. She's coordinating um, this month's service day. Okay, a big one. Our senior milestone celebration will be on May 5th, Speak of Denial. Very fun. Um, we have a good list. We need to kind of add some names, take one off. Um, so we'll get an accurate list of names in this week's midweek email. Um, but we will have our potluck lunch, and we'll get to just celebrate this milestone in these students' lives. Um, yes, it's such a it's such a fun day. So uh, please try to be there for that. Bring some food. It's going to be a great day celebrating these graduates, class of 2024. Okay, and I'm going to welcome you this morning. Um, we're so glad you're here. I just want to say I love this place and I love these people and God is here. Um, if you're a guest with us this morning, please take a minute to scan the QR code and give us your information. I promise we won't bug you. We just want to thank you for coming. Um, do I have any volunteers? Marsha, I see you. Kayla, come on down. Okay. If you are visiting, if you have any visitors near you, we have some friendship bread. It's really good. That we would like to get to you before you leave today. Thank you, ma'am. Perfect. Point it out. <laughs> okay. And I will invite our praise team up, and I feel like we will begin our worship service this morning. Rejoicing over me. So it's okay 
to be crazy enough as well. We just know that his promises are true either way. That's right. So let's stand together and worship our Father.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't know if you've been watching the news this weekend, but um, some bigger, bigger things in, in Israel have been happening. Um, you don't know Iran has started to attack Israel now, and so there's a lot more people involved in the conflict. And, um, just thinking about what's been going on in the world, and, and even here locally, um, there's a, there's a lot of reasons to grieve. Thinking about that idea to grieve and, and I, how I feel like maybe our society has has almost made grieving and lamenting a very negative thing. Um, while there are negatives about it, it's it's a part of who we are. It's a part of being human, um, and it's a necessary step to become prophets. To become people of God to grieve the, thing, the things that are happening in the world and happening around us. And I would like to read a, a psalm as a prayer with you guys. Um, and I want to, and I'm changing it in, from first person to be, um, to be first person poor with all of us. And so if you would bow your heads, we can, uh, we can collectively pray together. And, and pray for those who are suffering. Lord God, rebuke us not in your anger. God, please do not discipline us with your wrath. God, be gracious to us. Be gracious to us, God, because we are frail. Heal us, Lord. Our bones are troubled. My soul, our soul is also greatly troubled. But you, O oh Lord, how long turn, O oh Lord? Deliver our lives. Save us for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who will give you praise? I am so we are so weary with moaning. Every night we flood our beds with tears. We drench our couches with weeping. My our eyes waste away because of the grief and the things we see. We grow weak because of our foes. God, depart from us all the workers of evil. For the Lord has heard the sounds of our weeping. The Lord has indeed heard our plea. The Lord accepts our prayers. As we stand and we are so surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. God, see us and have mercy for those suffering enter into our lives as the Prince of Peace. In the world of trouble, God, let us look to you as our salvation, for you hear our prayers. God, act quickly. It is in your name I pray. Amen. 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 This is our song to prepare us for our communion together. With the next slide will say offering, and Ron will come up and explain what he's about to do. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Yeah. 
opportunity to continue your worship. And pray in the work of this church. You can use the QR code or cash checks in the boxes at the back of the room. to leave the QR code up for a little bit while I explain logistically what we do here. Um, if you're a first-time visitor, I, we're glad you're here. Um, I, can we go ahead and bring the lights up, Alan? I've got, or did we already do that and I missed it because I was out of the room? Never mind. I thought we were still here, so we kind of got it. Great. Um, we do have tables set up around the room for communion. So I want to explain to our visitors and guests, uh, but also to our members, because I'm going to ask you to do something slightly different today. And um, I ha I'll explain it again after I share some thoughts with you, because um, Dylan will need to be, you know, told twice. So, because um, <laughs> he's going to do what he wants to do anyway, even though I have instructions for him. What I'd like for you to do is, if you are going to simply take communion in the pews as you normally do or as you've chosen to do today, that's fine with me. Um, stay where you are, but I would like for you to huddle up as a family. Um, and so if you have immediate family here and you're staying in the pews, just if you could maybe get one, half your group to go into the next aisle and circle up a little bit so you can see each other. If you normally go to the tables uh, during communion, what I'd like to invite you to do today is take your whole family together, go to the table, get your elements, but separate out into a smaller circle instead of having one big circle around the table. Does that make sense? Okay. I want you to do that because I'm going to ask you to do something in the smaller family circles. Now there's a catch. Not everybody here has a family. Yes? We have single people here. So some of them need to be adopted into your family. Are you with me? Okay? Hello? Yes, sir. All right. That's the logistics. Now we'll get back to the meaningful stuff. I want to read a passage to you from Matthew chapter 12. This is actually a quote from Isaiah the prophet. But Matthew tells us that the words of Isaiah the prophet were fulfilled in Jesus' ministry. And here's how Matthew chose to use Isaiah's words to describe Jesus' ministry. Here is my sermon, servant whom I have chosen. One I love, in whom I take great delight. I will pour out my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed. Or extinguish a smoldering wick until he brings justice to victory. And in his name, Gentiles will hope. <coughs> this Sunday is a Sunday of communion for bruised reeds and smoldering wicks. This Sunday is a Sunday for gathering in the presence of Jesus and saying to him, I'm not okay. And maybe you are okay. Maybe great things are happening in your life right now. And you came to church ready to celebrate and you walked into a mess then please 
circle up with your family and pray for all the rest of us who are bruised and smoldering. I invite you to gather as families. If you're going to the tables, go grab your elements, but huddle up in a smaller group of your family. Make sure we get everybody included, whether you're staying in the chairs or you're going to the tables. But I'm asking you as a family to say a prayer somehow, someone or all of you, pray for smoldering wicks and bruised reeds. Beg God not to extinguish us. To bind up our brokenness. And to give us hope for a future. Can we do that, church? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to say a quick prayer. Not a small prayer, but a quick prayer. And then I want you to grab your elements and, and circle up as big. Jesus taught us to call you Father. Here we are, your children. Come and hear our hearts this morning as we remember the bruising of Jesus and the extinguishing of his life. May we find hope knowing he will not break us or smother our, our flames because he has given us life. Meet us here, Father, we pray. Through Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our friend. Amen.